11 decisions. He's won 10 of those. 82 and a third innings. And the first pitch is slapped on the infield to the left side, and there's a quick out. And I couldn't get it out fast enough that how very aggressive Coco Woolley is, and she just... And Burzon is pitching to Macy Bergeron. That was a good first out there because Woolley has 14 stolen bases. Here's Amari Hooper, or Harper rather, hitting 389. She will try and drag every now and then. She's a Californian. She does not hit for a lot of power, but she does have excellent speed and frequently gets aboard a 484 on base percentage. The one two pitch to Harper. You see that big drop ball there from Burzon that the previous pitch was a screwball in the outside corner. She comes back with a drop ball. So she's changing planes and she will try to work both sides of the plate. The one two pitch. Fouled away, that's going to be out of reach of everybody up into the bleachers. Good catch over there. I don't, might have been on the bounce. It was. Oh, it wasn't that good. He'll take a bow anyway. Harper at the plate, Miller or Jasmine Hill on deck. And let's bang through the left side. That's what Amari Harper can do. Five, six holes good to the slappers and the lefties. I don't know if we can see what kind of pitch that was. Let's take a look at uh, some beautiful azure skies right now. A very slight wind blowing out. 73 glorious degrees. No chance of rain. In fact, the entire series should be rainless. And the wind's north at about 7 miles an hour, if that. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend in the capital city. Here's Hill with a 365 average. He has started... 33 games now, all of them for A&M. Arizona State transfer followed her coach to Texas A&M. And she drops that base hit into right field. Ruderty gets to it and sends a one hopper back to third to hold Harper at second base. But Hill follows Harper's base hit with one of her own. These uh, Aggie hitters are very aggressive. There's a pitch that uh, is definitely a hitter's pitch there and she jumped all over it. Rudity with the cannon in right field. Halts that runner at second base. Burzon having to work with runners at second and first with only one out here in the initial inning. The Aggies are 28 and four. They are eight and one in Southeastern Conference play and they are coming off a sweep of Auburn. Well, they have three sweeps, Lynn. They've beaten uh, South Carolina, Auburn, and Mississippi State. A&M has really piled up a lot of runs in the first half of their games this year. And when they score first, or when they score in the first inning, they are 12 and one this year, 19 and two when they score first. And they've proven they can come from behind in that last game against Auburn at the Auburn A&M series. The Ags were down six to one and they ended up winning that game 14 to six. We got some firepower. That pitch is a little off the plate. Annette Bergman is calling balls and strikes. Kaylee Young is at first base. James Colsey is the third base umpire. Trinity Cannon is a dangerous hitter. Ten home runs. And that pitch is high and away unhittable. The bases are loaded with only one out. That dips low. Little change up trying to lead that short. Cottrell does not bite on that pitch. Harper and Hill and Cannon aboard. There's that pitch whips in on the inside part of the plate. Looked like it had a little screwball action to it. Good location right there in the legs, right at the knees. Inside pitch, hard to handle. Cottrell says, I'll look for another one. Good job by Bergeron. 
Four times this year, Cottrell has come to the plate with the bases loaded, and she has responded with two base hits. The outfield is deep and straight away. Now it's three and one. Harper at third after a one out single. Hill at second base following Harper's base hit and Cannon on first after the walk. And that's a strike. It brings the count to three and two. Might have been taken the whole way there, huh, Lynn? Not a bad idea. After a bit of a shaky start for Burzon, let's see if she can come all the way back. Ground ball, twisting foul to the left side. And that's exactly what the Tigers want here. They want a ground ball to the left side. You know, they are playing in. They're going for the runner at home, unlike baseball, where you'd probably just go for two. 107 runs that scored in the first three innings this year for the Aggies. They have been really, really good early. Their first couple of times through the lineup has produced half of the runs that the Aggies have scored this year. Well, they're so aggressive. They changed their coaching staff a couple of years ago. This is year two, and uh, there has been terrific improvement. The 3-2 pitch, grounded foul again. Well, two years ago, the last year that the uh, the uh, a and was 12 and 12 in 2018. It's the first time to go 500 with this coaching staff now. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Ooh, that was close. A walk with the bases loaded after several pitches were spoiled by Cottrell. And the Aggies take a 1-0 lead. Let's see this pitch here. It's a bit outside, a very bit. close. Pressure on tried to frame it. That's a really nice take by Cottrell. Close, could have gone either way though, but worked in her favor. And the Tigers are still in a jam here and the Aggies, uh, they could make a huge statement here in this first inning. We talked about the exploits of Allie Enright a few moments ago and she's at the plate right now with a 421 average. 34 runs driven in, that's tops on the team, eight home runs, that's second on the team. She Burzon. does have 13 Ks, but she does have the most hits. And her 34 RBIs leads the team. She's got a chance to pad that stat right here. Burzon normally has exceptionally good control. She's walked only 12 in 82 innings, but two of them in this inning. Oh, she got her to fish on a rise ball out of the zone. That is a big K. It really is. Burzon delivers this pitch. It was too tempting for Enright as it just started lifting from the moment it left the hand of Burzon. And that's a huge strikeout for the second out. Here's Ryland Wiggins. Ball one. Wiggins is a senior hitting 295 out of Wiley, Texas. Burzon just trying to sharpen every pitch up. She can throw them all. It's not throwing them for strikes right now. Wiggins also has home run power with eight, along with six doubles. This is a powerful Texas A&M team. Ooh, nice stop by McKee. McKee, right in front of the one hopper innings. And you see what she throws, curve, drop, rise, change. She she can hum. Her top speed is 70 miles an hour, and that changeup comes in at 57. An event of all the pitching statistics, the one that really jumps out at me, only 61 hits allowed in 97 innings. That's extraordinary. The opposition is batting 179. 179. Yeah, and that 1.15 ERA, we just don't see that anymore. Allie Newland is having a heck of a year, both defensively and offensively. She's batting 366. She's behind here, three and oh. Five homers, 27 driven in. And Newland takes one inside, a four pitch pass to open things. Both pitchers trying to find blue strike zone. 
Let's check Texas A&M defensively. We'll do that in a moment. That pitch stays a little bit inside. Good bunt as usual. Briggs gets it. Aggies field at a 973 clip. Helps though when your pitcher has got an ERA at 1.15. Newland at second base. Pleasance pops it right back foul. And that's up on the net. I think the scouting report for the LSU Tigers is to be ready to attack early, just like AM is with their swings. This is popped up to Wiggins, the second baseman, and the veteran makes the catch. Yvette, she has been an everyday person in the lineup for a long time. She's making her 202nd start tonight. That's a bunch. It's a warrior out there. Here's Gutierrez after Pleasance pops up to second base. LSU needs a base hit. The breakout player for the LSU Tigers this year, no doubt, Raylan, Raylene Gutierrez. She's batting 368. 25 driven in, including five home runs. Hitting 304 in the SEC. Leading the team in RBIs in the SEC with seven. And also an extra base hit beside a uh, threat beside the homers, eight doubles and a couple of triples. You know what else she does? She makes contact. She has struck out three times this year. That's it. You're right about that. That's the second best mark in the SEC among the regulars. 2-2 Two -two pitch in on the hands and grounded foul. But that's remarkable a bit when you've been up to the plate. Absolutely. Talk about 87 your... times and you've struck out thrice. Talk about give yourself a chance to get on base, huh? Oh, look at that pitch. Just as we spoke about her contact, she takes up some immediate improvement. Uh, has been afforded Texas A&M with Ford at the helm. Absolutely has done a fantastic job there. Of course, the Aggies have a, his a storied history. I mean, they've won the College World Series, but they haven't been in the SEC that long, so. That kind of accounts for, you know, that stat about uh, this is the best record so far. But she has moved up the ladder. She's, she was a pitching coach at Stanford for a long time. And she was at St. Mary's, Fresno, Arizona State, now Texas A&M. So a Californian has come to Texas. And loves it, she says. It's a great place to raise her children. Here's Kramer Eshte. If that name sounds familiar, it's because... She played at uh, UL the last couple of seasons. Yeah, and she was on the field last year for the regional tournament here for the Cajuns. Eshte is from Brenham, Texas. Kennedy Powell will follow against Sidney Burzon, who had some control problems in the first. She got the first batter to ground out. Then she allowed base hits to Harper and Hill and then walked Cannon and Cottrell before retiring in right on strikes and Wiggins on a hot ground ball to third. There's plate umpire Annette Bergman. And that one bounces right up into the middle of her face mask. A liner to left, that's down for a base hit. Fielded on a hop by Newland. And so far, Texas A&M is making contact. They have been impressive offensively here. And as I said, they've been aggressive. Um, Merzon has had a little trouble finding the zone, but when she does, the Aggies have been swinging it pretty good. And here's Kennedy Powell, who's batting 295 at the bottom of the order. 
She has started every game but one, has Powell. All of Texas A&M's losses have been by one run. Wow. That means if they had scored just five more runs, they would be undefeated at the right time, of course. Of course. Well, actually, it would take more than that because that would tie it, and then they would need four more to win it. So, But they've been close. Let's put it like that. You, you talk, there's too much math involved in there, so just tell me the yeah, answer. Yeah, they would need two more runs per <laughs> four per those four losses. Here's the one-two pitch to power. Swing and a miss. It's a good one. Good rise ball is moving through the zone. Those slappers just cannot lay off that pitch. Look at the losses. One run. One of them was in eight innings. Gutierrez gets it to the shortstop Pleasance for the force out. The relay throw back to Petty is not in time. So Coco Woolley bounces into a fielder's choice, three to six. Once again, that slick fielding Gutierrez at first. It's like no biggie for her to make that play. Always getting that lead runner. Silky smooth, she uh, is defensively. She is that. Here's Harper. Harper had a base hit last time. That has moved her average to 400. There goes the runner. The peg down bounces by, and it looked like a late arrival at second base. Here's a throw down to third, safe there. Must have been a really good slide. Looked like the ball was going to beat her, but she can flat run. And Briggs has a good arm. We'll see this play again. No hesitate. Oh, it's a good slide. Do you see how she goes to the outside of the bag? How athletic was that slide? For her team today, she has walked a couple, including one with the bases loaded. Well, early on, the Tigers were playing as good as anybody in the country. They, you know, that 11 a.m. start here against Texas, the place was rocking. The Tigers looked unbeatable. And then they kind of ran into a little slump here. Here's Kelly Lynch. The ebbs and flows of a long season. Indeed. Lynch has been a two-way performer for the Tigers. Great pickup from University of Washington. Two-way player, pitcher, and a hitter. She's the DP today. Lynch has reached base in 10 consecutive games, not necessarily by base hit, but she's been on base in 10 straight games. And this one is hit pretty well out toward right center, but there is room and time for Allie Enright, and she makes the catch. So Lynch flies to right field, and this brings on Carly Petty, who's on a three-game hitting streak and has been steady Petty for the Tigers this year, both defensively and offensively. Yeah, she plays a great second base, just anchors, really turns that double play well with Pleasance. One ball, one strike, one out, one nothing. Texas A&M, this is the opening game in a three-game series. Kind of got jam there. She pulls it out toward right field. It's the second consecutive catch by Enright. I'm not sure the Tigers have squared up a ball yet. Here's Mackenzie Rudity. Batting 329. She is one of five Tigers in the lineup who have started every game this year. Oh, 
And she is first pitch swinging and pops it up into foul ground. Cannon to face, two, three, and four in the order. The off-speed pitch a little off the mark. Urson kind of continues to work from behind. The Aggies have won seven of their last nine. Once again, a 2-0 and o pitch, and the Aggies are swinging. They're aggressive. They are very aggressive on the base paths also. And there is warm-up activity in the LSU bullpen again. They've got 51 stolen bases. That's a nice combination when you're talking about almost 50 home runs this year and that many stolen bases as well. That's a power. combination of uh, power and speed speed and and power. You're right. <laughs> Burzon gives a second and now a third look to the umpire. Hmm. Both pitchers have kind of. Jeez. Jeez, Luis. Doesn't matter what we think. Oh my God, that's a strike. Look at Burzon, she's just shaking her head. <laughs> she does come back and get the cold strike. That's a great pitch. It is, it crossed the, the plate. Kept moving as a strike. Texas A&M has 47 homers in 32 games and that matches the entire total for last year in 56 games. So they are way, way ahead in the power output. As I said, they're, they're red hot right now playing good softball. Jasmine Hill. Three sweeps in the SEC so far on weekends. One ball, one strike. One out. One nothing Texas A&M top of the third. We've had beautiful weather today in Baton Rouge and we are forecast to get the same tomorrow and Saturday. Got to give a shout out to the biggest Aggie that lives in Louisiana, ex pitcher and ex coach, Shan McDonald. I know she's gigging them right now. The 2 2 pitch is hammered on a line. It's over the head of Briggs. It bounces off the center field wall, and Briggs plays it brilliantly Perfectly. off the carom and then whips it back to second base. How many times do you see a line drive Perfectly. single off the center field wall? She knew that ball was over her head and played it perfectly. Bounce is, off the wall and keeps it to a single. That's a stream of milk out to the wall in center field and Briggs shoots it back to second base from the warning track and holds Jasmine Hill to a wall banging single. Aggies have hit the ball hard. They have. That's about the third or fourth ball that's uh, really squared up and blistered. Cannon checks her swing. They will appeal. She did not commit. 2 and 0. Oh. She walked back in the first inning and that set up the bases loaded for a Cottrell walk. Pleasance. To second for one, to first for two. Six, four, three. Walked the first batter she faced, that was Newland, and since then she's retired six consecutive Tigers. Got a great crowd here, Lynn, and they're still pulling in. Game time tomorrow is five o'clock Central Time. Game time Sunday is 2 p.m. Central Daylight Saving Time. Come out and work on your tan. Drink a cold one, eat some peanuts, and watch fantastic college softball. Five o'clock tomorrow, two o'clock Saturday. Let me 
sh and I'm sure the Easter Bunny is going to show up here at some point. I saw him earlier. I did too. The Easter Lapin. Lapin? Lapin is a rabbit. Can you spell that for me? Mm, I think it's L A P P I N, but I'm not sure. Lapin? Lapin. That's pretty close on my part. La Pen. Don't put, don't say pin. La Pen. La Pen. Better? That's it. That's it. More better. Big K there on a rise ball. Bergeron couldn't find it. It's the second strikeout for Kennedy. Here is Maddox McKee. Maddox McKee made a nice stop in that first inning to, to, to uh, stop the A&M surge offensively. Interestingly enough, she's hitting much better against left-handed pitchers this year. So much for that theory. She's six for ten against left-handed pitchers. And of course, she's only three for 20 against right-handed pitchers. Of course, she's taken Danica Coffey's place. Danica is out for the year with an ACL. And I saw her in the training room before the game began, and she's had the surgery. So she looks pretty good. But she's out for the year, and there she is. Huge, huge loss for the Tigers, offensively and defensively. McKee had three hits and a couple of RBI in the win against Nichols on Tuesday. This time she pops it up to Willie, the shortstop. That's eight in a row now. And yes, coffee is on the shelf for this year. Gotcha. Gotcha. That was kind of a Lenism. I gotcha. A strike to Ali Newland at the top of the order. Newland walked the first time she came up. And she's been the only base runner. Ooh, that's a heck of a pitch, but not first strike. You made the case a few games ago that Newland and I'm going to throw Petty in there, but you specifically mentioned Newland as right now a leading candidate for most valuable player I, for the Tigers, and I would not uh, I would not cast a vote against that. Nope, in my brain, that's who's getting my vote. She's had a terrific senior season so far. This time she pops it up to the right side. It's another very quick inning as Wiggins squeezes it. Nine in a row, retired by Kennedy. Julia Cottrell at the plate. She walked with the bases loaded in the first inning. And that has accounted for the only run. The one strike pitch is in the dirt. Took something off of that first pitch at 68 miles an hour and then tried a drop ball, but it was in the dirt. On the second pitch. Rise ball out of the zone. The Aggies do something after home runs that uh, LSU is hoping not to see in this series, but they have a uh, a hat, a howdy hat, and they also have Homer the horse. This ball is driven out toward the corner in right field, and Rudity is there to catch it. So do they do both on the home run? Yeah, I think so. They bring out Homer the horse. It's kind of a stick horse. Yeah, who and did? then they do Howdy the hat. Howdy hat. You know, Howdy. Kid, Howdy. Kids nowadays probably don't know what a stick pony is. Well, that's true. Ooh, I love my stick pony. How about you? Yeah, of course. Did yours have a name? Uh, I don't remember. Probably. I called mine Ouch.
Did it buck you? <laughs> I just called it out. <laughs> One strike pitch upstairs. You know, if you gave a if you gave a stick pony to a kid today, <laughs> for, first question would be, where's the control pad? Where do I put the batteries? <laughs> Pleasance with a chance at shortstop. Two gone. Got us a really good ball game here. A good pitching ball game, that's for sure. Here's Wiggins. She smashed one on a short hop to McKee with the bases loaded back in the first, and McKee got the force out at third. Will that ball stay fair? Yes, it does. McKee, nice play, but better play by Gutierrez, saving that wild throw. That's what a good first baseman is able to do, recognize that she was not going to get the out at first base and come off the bag and make sure you don't surrender another base, yeah, or no, maybe two. Well, maybe with a good throw, but I was thinking that was a base hit all the way. Oh, I think so, too. I think McKee's only choice was whether to let it roll and potentially go foul. And I think she made the right choice. Yeah, it didn't look like it was going to. So an infield hit, that's the fifth of the game for the Aggies. This one comes with two outs, and it brings on Kramer Eshte, who had a base hit in the second inning. And will the Aggies stop running here? Big lead over there at first. That's a gaudy stat, 346 batting average, 95 RBIs with two outs. Both second in the SEC with those stats, and they are not fair going. They said, okay, we're going to, we don't care if we leave early. We're going to try it again. That makes her seven for seven on the base paths. The throw a little bit high. Pleasance had to leave her feet. But even a perfect throw would not have been ooh, enough to nab Wiggins. Ooh, she switched her feet and she was almost tagged out. That was kind of close and I think Beth Tarina is gonna challenge that. Pleasance was pleading her case I'm not on sure. the after tag. The base runner was losing her balance and she kind of switched her feet and Pleasance kept the tag on her. See this replay again. Watch, watch, watch. Whoop. Well, Did the foot come off yeah, the back? Yeah, I don't know. She might have. I don't know if we can see. Ooh, look. It's off. She's out. Oh, she's not, she's not challenging it? I thought she was challenging it. The first pitch to Powell is lifted into left center field, and Briggs hustles over to make the something about that in the fourth. Briggs, Pleasance, and Gutierrez for the Tigers. Briggs is batting 333 in SEC competition this year. She had a sacrifice bunt last time, which maintained her 350 average for the season. She just topped 69 on the gun. Briggs is on a four game hitting streak. You know, Yvette, here's another lefty in Briggs who has hit left-handed pitching really well. She's batting nearly 400 against left-handed pitching. Briggs is. Not just, that time. I was just about to say she gets her bat on the ball, but uh, definitely kudos to the pitcher on that pitch. This ball just rising up out of the zone. And Briggs knew it as soon as she yep. started the swing. Yep. You can see it in her face. Here's Pleasance. 
She has yet to get going against SEC pitching. Taylor came into the game batting 207 yeah, that's against SEC chunkers. It's not a number you would associate with Taylor Pleasant. Never. Just trying to get back on track again. Started off red hot. The 1-1. One, one. Looped out toward shallow center field. And it's caught by Hill. Better kind of lunging in an off-speed pitch. There's been one base runner for LSU. And that came 10 batters ago in the first inning. Ball one to Gutierrez. Aggie's wearing all black. That's not something that you normally see. It is black, right? That's a strike that levels the count at one. We were glowing about Gutierrez's contact ability, the fact that she had only struck out three times the whole year, but then she fanned looking in the first. My phone is blowing up telling you to quit jinxing everybody. Two balls and a strike. Two outs, nobody on base. Gutierrez lets that pass, and now we've got a hitter's count at three and one. Gutierrez is plus 300 against SEC pitching. <laughs> Newland walked to open the game for the Tigers and she has been the only base runner. This hugs the line and then twists off foul. I think the Tiger philosophy is to, to try to be on plane for that curveball. Took something off of that pitch, but it was a ball. It was high, or change up was high. So Gutierrez extends the inning. Two walks now by Kennedy in this game and that has resulted in the only base runners. Kelly Lynch up to bat. She has the best SEC batting average of all of the Tigers. Bedell the freshman is running at first. That's not a name that we have called much. She's running for Gutierrez. One strike pitch to Lynch, laced into the right field corner, cut off near the foul line. Bedell on her way to third, and she'll stop right there. And there's Kelly Lynch again. She is money for LSU in the SEC series. She's now working on a four-game hitting streak and shoots one into right field, allowing Bedell to hustle to third. Here comes the freshman pinch runner. And now the Tigers, for the first time tonight, have two runners aboard. Up steps Petty. Here comes the fifth year senior for the Tigers. Petty flying to right field in the second inning. Petty's got uh, five hits in the SEC series so after two were out Gutierrez earned a walk Lynch has singled the pinch runner Bedell to third that ball got in on the hands of Petty and it's foul straight back it's down 0 and 2 Kennedy went to work quickly throwing two strikes actually three one fouled off oh and hits her Petty is hit by a pitch and the bases are loaded. You do not have to move. And when you're that geared up, take it for the team. It's Mackenzie Rudity. 
LSU's best chance here so Ruderty, far. Ruderty hitting 308 against SEC pitching. And that rips the outside part of the plate for a strike. And of course, Kelly Lynch, that was the first hit for the Tigers. Broke up a no hitter. A walk, a single, and a hit batter after two were out. A little number to the shortstop. And the throw in time at first base. Woolley gets it to Harper. Powell struck out in the second inning. So, Lynn, did you know that stick harsh rodeos were a thing? No. They are. Big all over the country. Man, once again, I missed out in childhood. Look, you didn't even have to feed the thing or. I mean, how do you how's it? How do you train a stick horse? It's all in the rider. And of course, mutton busting. I know what mutton busting is. But a stick horse rodeo? You were deprived as a youngster, I can tell. Well, you didn't go to one. No, I didn't. You didn't even know what it was. I did not. Me either. I probably had one in my neighborhood, though. I am getting a little old. That's hammered foul. The Aggies have barreled up a few balls. They have hit some balls hard. The keys stopped one that probably would have scored a few more runs for the Ags. Powell at the bottom of the order will be followed by Woolley and then Harper, 9-1 and 2 for the Aggies here in the fifth. The one-two pitch. A call third strike. That one was rising through the strike zone. And that's what it needs to do, move through the zone. Hmm, might have been a little high. Here's Coco Woolley. Not a lot of chirping at the at blue from the players or the coaches. The pitchers have given blue a few looks on sure call strikes and balls, but otherwise pretty clean ball game. Well, that's the same pitch that just got called for a strike. Now, remember what I told you about pitches. They're like snowflakes. No two are ever alike. That's from an umpire's perspective. I was just about to say, you made that up, huh? 2 0 pitch. That gets a piece of the outside corner. Woolley is a young lady who's having a heck of a year, and she was down for six games with injuries. So her production is uh, six games short this year. She's dynamic. When she gets on base, she's not stopping. This will be close. But, of course, Pleasant's arm makes up for it. There may be a shortstop or two with a better arm than Pleasant's, but I couldn't tell you their names off the top of my head. I'll tell you that. She's, from any angle, just unbelievable velocity and accuracy from shortstop. And the irony of it is when she plays for the United States team, she's a first baseman. Well, what a nice target that is over at first base. One strike on Harper. Harper has singled and scored the only run. And she struck out in the third. We are in the gloaming here in Baton Rouge. This is the time when there's still enough sunlight that the lights have not yet taken full control. In a few minutes, there'll be more darkness and more contrast with the stadium lights. But those shadows are gone now. And that, uh, when McKee had that uh, rocket launched at her in the first inning, she had been shading her eyes. That's the one time at this park where the sun really affects the left side of the field. 
Start All time right. tomorrow is 5 o'clock. Start time on Saturday is 2 o'clock. Three and two on Harper. And a looper out toward right field. Ruderty diving for it, cannot get it. Briggs is hustling, though, to keep it from rolling past and allowing Harper more than one base. But that's uh, reassurance that your center fielder is going to be there. She dove for that ball. It was a, just a dying quail out there. There's Briggs to back her up. Briggs is, you know, that really wasn't that close, but the effort looked good. Well, here's somebody you do not want to face with two outs. Jasmine Hill has driven in 16 runs this year with two outs. And guess what her batting average is with two outs? That's very impressive. 484. Even more better, as they say in Cajun country. Well, the whole team has been remarkable. The Aggies are batting as a team 346 with two outs. There's a one hop chop that Gutierrez turns into an unassisted out. So another shutout inning for Burzon, but so far, Oklahoma and Texas. I think Texas and LSU will meet up. Don't believe o OU will race Tiger Park next year. What a murderer's row. That is a fair ball. Wow. And the Tigers put a runner at second base as Macy Bergeron goes the other way. That might have been the break the Tigers needed. That ball, let's see, is it right on the line? Good inside out swing here. Let's see how close this is. Right on the line. And Bergeron stops at second base. And we'll have a pinch runner for the LSU catcher. This is Townsend, Maya Townsend. So Townsend is running for Bergeron, who has opened the fifth inning for LSU with a double. Here's McKee and fouls it off. LSU for only the second time as a runner in scoring position. Oh, you've got to be able to get that bunt down in this situation. Well, you've but got now a, there are two strikes. Got a bunch strikes. Just like you got to swing at strikes, you become a better hitter if you're swinging at strikes, bunting strikes. McKee. Oh, that ball takes a hop up. It came up and hit the chest of Woolley. And that's two breaks for the Tigers. A ball right on the line. And then this ball. Boy, they've ruled that an error. That's, How? That, I don't know. I mean, that ball just came up that, on That's her. uncatchable when it bounces as weirdly as that one. But the Tigers will take it any way they can get it. Of course, we talked about how well the Aggies do field. Well, that's one where you know. Newland has been sensational with runners in scoring position. Six RBIs in SEC play so far. Well, she's hitting 500 with runners in scoring position. More evidence for your case that she's the MVP right now for the Tigers. Well, and she's done it with her glove also out in left field. Might be a double play. It is. Wiggins was able to tag the runner. Could the runner have avoid stopped? Should have stopped. Should have stopped. Fallen something. Stop right here. Just uh, stop. 
If you stop, you force the second baseman to come at you to make the tag. And, you delay and by it. that time, the runner at first would have been safe. Good job by the Aggies, though. It was a 4-3 double play. Kind of a freshman, maybe, mistake in the SEC play. Speed of the game is just so much higher. Here's Briggs, who's 0 for 1. It's a huge double play. An incredibly big double play, and one LSU, quite honestly, could have stayed out of. All down. Do something. All you little girls out there. Riggs has a sacrifice bunt and a strikeout. Chops this one left side. This is tough. The Tigers have tied it. Briggs gets it down, got it to the left side. Woolley could not make the play cleanly and throw it over to first base. And that's, that's going to be an infield hit, and LSU has tied it. And that's the beauty of slapping. Look at Briggs just hustling down. By the way, it's her dad's birthday today. Ooh, what a shot. Pleasance lines it right to Wiggins. But LSU, despite a base running... With Hall of Fame coach Yvette Gerard, I'm Lynn Rollins. Got us a good one, Lynn. We do. Gutierrez backing up in foul ground. The sure-handed one makes the catch. Cannon, one pitch, one out. Big out for Burzon after her team ties it up for her. Go out there and control hit. Get the Ks, first of all, and control hitters. Not a lot of Ks. Four strikeouts so four. for Burzon and uh, three for Kennedy, both of them coming into this game with uh, much higher strikeouts per innings ratios than what we've had today. One run, six hits for Texas A&M. One run, three hits for the Tigers. We'll be right back here at five o'clock tomorrow evening for the second game in the series on the SEC ESPN Network, and likewise on Saturday at 2 p.m. 1-1, a chance for Pleasance. There's the second out. You know, she doesn't really have to charge the ball very much. That big arm she's got just guns people down. She's got a howitzer. Here's Allie Enright. Burzon has done a nice job on her. She struck her out and then induced a ground ball to the shortstop. And this is one of the very best offensive threats in the country. We said uh, A&M is eight and one coming into this series. It's the best start in the SEC ever by the Aggies. Haven't been in the conference as long as LSU. Of course, LSU is an original member. Aggies coming over from what, the Big 12? Yep. This is a long fly ball, foul ball. Three other SEC games are in progress, and we will update you on scores in just a moment. The 0-2 pitch to Enright. Grounded sharply down to Petty. She stabs it, she turns it into an out, and a very efficient. We turn our attention to Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the Razorbacks have regained the lead they are up three to two over the Tigers in the first game of their series. Gutierrez, first pitch swinging, pops it up left side. Third baseman Powell is there. So LSU got back-to-back -back home runs earlier against Arkansas by White and Travinsky. They had a 2-1 lead, but now it's three to two. Arkansas in the fifth inning, leading LSU in SEC baseball. Kelly Lynch at the plate. Steer right from Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We've got one final in the SEC in softball to this point. Missouri in a non-conference game defeated George Mason 11 to 2. They're in the sixth inning in Starkville. Florida nine, Mississippi State six. I'll tell you last week when the Tigers win Missouri, they looked flat and miserable. It was so cold. Could barely see the umpire's eyes. Kentucky has a three to one lead over Alabama. They play in the fifth inning at Kentucky. And you're up to date with other SEC scores. Second baseman Wiggins moves to her left and makes the catch just short of the foul line. Oh, here's Carly Petty. Two quick outs in the sixth. Petty looks at a strike. One and one. Kennedy with that steady dose of curveball sweeping across the plate. She has walked two, she has struck out three. And the one two. That might have been a cross up. Yeah, Looked like Cottrell definitely. was looking for something different. Definitely was a cross up. And that blue could have gotten that right in the face. Cottrell was moving to her left and calling for the ball up. And it didn't work out like that, but it's not going to make any difference. Harper is calling for it at first base and takes the pop up and it's an easy prior to this game with runners on base and runners in scoring position. If they lose this game, they can look back at that, the chances that uh, they didn't capitalize on. A strike to Wiggins, she's one for two. She had an infield hit back in the sixth or make it the fourth. And a fly ball hit deep to center. Briggs running for it. Briggs tracks it down where the grass meets the dirt on the warning track. Wiggins kind of lunged for that ball and she hit it to the warning track. Of course, Briggs makes it look so simple. This has a great read off the bat. That's five in a row retired by Burzon. And here's Eshte, the former Ragin' Cajun. One for two. Smashes it the other way past McKee. Este now two for three. She came up last inning with runners in scoring position. She would have loved to have that hit then, but nonetheless, AM has a runner on first base with one out. And we are having a pinch hitter. Well, I would assume Este is a really good runner, and it is a pinch hitter. So Powell, who has struck out twice at the bottom of the order, will give way to a pinch hitter. This is Maya Perez. Hitting 167. Perez is from Corona, California, a freshman. She's hitting 250 as a pinch hitter. Two RBIs. That's a strike. Four for 24. We've got a 1-1 game. We've got a 1-1 count. We've got a one out and one runner aboard. A lot of ones. We're in the seventh. The pitch. 
Swing and a miss. Yeah, got it a swing. Chase at that pitch. Definitely a pitcher's pitch. Perez retreats. That pitch was sinking and fading, and Perez had committed. Now the one two from Burzon. Good job by Bergeron keeping that ball in front, keeping the run at uh, Eshte at first. The 2-2. Two -two. Lobbed out into left field. It's going to carry deep enough for Newland to get it. Perez did a good job. She did. She, uh, of, she adjusted. Putting that ball in the outfield, but it carried out to Newland. So now the top of the order and a tough customer in Coco Woolley. Bounced up the middle. Oh, what a play! What a play by Petty! Petty goes to her. Getting those ground ball outs. Sweeping curveball is in, ooh, right off her glove. Rudity smashes it off the third baseman, Powell, and she's aboard. That might be the hardest hit ball that LSU has hit tonight. And here come the Tigers in the bottom of the seventh. There was no chance for Powell at third base. I mean, that is hotter than the hot corner. So LSU with a base hit to open the seventh. Coach is meeting to decide what to do here. We're gonna bunt. We're doing a pinch runner. What do we have left on the bench? Rudity has a little better than average speed at first base. Certainly is not a liability on the base paths. Bergeron is at the plate. She has struck out and doubled as she shot a liner off the right field foul line last time. Let's see how the Tigers play this. She is going to bunt. She pokes at it instead of letting the ball come to the bat. It's Emily's, Emily Kennedy's job to not allow her to put that bunt down. One, either make her pop it up or foul it off with good spinning pitches and it's Bergeron's job to get it down and she can't quite do it that's twice tonight the Tigers have asked somebody to bunt and they failed to do it on the first two pitches and you know we always the old axiom is bunting is easy I don't think it's easy too many people can't do it and I know they practice it And right, the right fielder moves to her right and makes the catch in the gap for the out. But this is where, you know, it's so important to get that bunt down. You want a positive at bat. And I think we, do we have a pinch hitter? Kayla, Kayla Walker coming in, had a big home run against Nichols midweek. So the sophomore, Michaela Walker, is pinch hitting for McKee. Rudity is at first base with one out. Walker fouls that one into the, LS, into the LSU dugout. Tough job for Walker. Uh, Kennedy is a really good pitcher and you, know, you hadn't seen her yet in a tough situation. That's a very close take. I was wondering. One ball, one strike. If that arm would come up for a strike. Walker waits the pitch a little bit away. Good location. Just but a, a very low. good eye by Walker. Yes. And that is difficult to do coming off the bench and seeing pitches of the caliber that Kennedy throws. The 2-1.
Off the mark, it's three and one. Those pitches aren't missing very much. Oh no, just by a fraction of an inch. Kennedy's like, I got this, I got this. Let's see if she does. That catches the outside edge. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Rudity at first base. 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom of the seventh. The junior is a cool customer in that circle. Walker takes a hack out of it and deposits a souvenir on the right side. Walker has some power. She hasn't played much, but she will play in the future. Like we said, there's eight seniors on this LSU team. Again, the 3-2 pitch. Got her. A cold third strike, and that is one heck of a delivery by Kennedy. She, she never panicked. Talk about believing yourself. Here's... What a great pitch, too. That is a terrific pitch on a 3-2 count in a tie ball game in the seventh she inning. She wasn't miss, missing much on those call balls. Now Newland. And is there a player that you would want right now in the box other than Newland? Nope, not for me. 70 miles an hour on that pitch. At night, just amazes to me, amazing to me that we see these kind of speeds across the country, night after night. Newland, they call a strike. Newland didn't believe it. She has walked, she has popped up to second base, and she has bounced into a 4-3 double play. Pitch number 100 coming for Kennedy. The one two change up and foul back. We have not seen a lot of those from Kennedy. No. I think you can kind of detect it. Might be a work in progress for her. Oh, she just delivered another one, I think. And that is lined with some authority the other way, but Este is out there to make the catch in left field. Louisiana. The infield is in the grill here. Pleasance gets it over to Gutierrez and a quick out as Harper rounds out six to three. We play in the eighth. Let's see what Texas A&M has done in extra innings this year. Pleasance again, leaning to her right, and makes the play. That ball was smacked by Hill, but Pleasance was equal to the task. Covers a lot of ground over there in that six hole. Texas A&M is playing in its fourth Extra inning game, they've won two out of the first three. Jasmine Hill has singled twice, bounced out to Gutierrez and lined out to Pleasance. It's turned into a pitcher's duel. 108 pitches for Burzon right now. The 2-2 pitch rises out of the zone. And that misses and extends the top of the inning. 
The infield had lurched toward the dugout. Fans thought it was strike three. Burzon has walked three. And that's the first one since the first inning. She walked two in the first inning, including one with the bases loaded. Yep, she and really hasn't walked anybody since. Really that one. has settled down. When the Aggies threatened to bust it wide open in the first inning, she pitched her way out of it. Kelly Ford's going to come out here with a change. Is it a change or is it a re-entry? It is a pinch runner. Haley Golden is pinch running. Two strike pitch to Cannon. Off the mark. We've said this before, 10 home runs leads the Aggie team. Down though, early, one and two. Now the count is level. The make it happen pitch at 2 2, chop foul past third. If you're thinking Golden may be moving from first base, she's attempted two steals this year. She's made them both. But I don't think they'll take the bat out of Cannon's hands. I don't think so either. Right three. Steal, right three called. On this field in extra innings. Pitchers have been brilliant in this game. Briggs is one for two. That RBI infield hit back in the fifth inning moved her hitting streak to five games. Briggs also had a midweek home run against Nichols. So she can she can do it all. Short game, slap it through the infield, drive it in the gaps, and hit it over the fence. Along with being a two-time Golden Glove winner. A lot of her base hits go to the left side. She will spray the ball, that's correct. And they play her that way. And they're playing her relatively shallow. Except in left field. But Jasmine Hill is playing her, I think, extremely shallow. Well, it worked. Briggs lifts one out into left field. Este moves to her left and grabs it. So a fly ball to left field for the first out. Emily Kennedy has walked two, struck out four, and allowed four hits. She has been very good tonight. She certainly has. That She's been very good all year. That 1.15 ERA. Oh, this Nelly. ball is driven deep to center field. You can pucker it. It's a game winner. Taylor Pleasance, who was hitting less than 200 against SEC pitching, has just smashed a walk-off home run. And the Tigers.
from the blueprint to the machine They're the architects of every scene Building bridges, reaching high With every design they touch the sky They calculate, they innovate With precision, they navigate Through circuits and codes they pave the way For a future brighter every day Engineers are the masters of creation Turning visions into foundation With expertise and dedication They shape the world as their vocation Engineers are the masters of creation Turning visions into foundation With expertise and dedication They shape the world as their vocation From mechanical to electrical Their knowledge is formidable They engineer solutions, they never tire Turning challenges into empire From skyscrapers to satellites Their impact reaches dizzying heights They solve problems, they innovate In the world they help facilitate Engineers, they're the masters of creation Turning visions into foundation With expertise and dedication They shape the world as their vocation It's not just about the calculations But the passion that drives their creations With perseverance they break through Barriers making dreams come true So here's to the engineers, the minds of play Shaping tomorrow in every way Innovation is their currency, they're the architects of our custody.